Raj Kapoor, let me get you, do I turn off your, uh... Raj, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear Great. you well. You, you are now in charge. Raj is um, running an incredible program called the India STEM Alliance in, in India. And he's going to talk about India making STEM strides. Um, India is a huge country with incredible talent and personality and potential and, and reality. And so Raj, can you share with us what you are doing? What is happening in India? Yeah, uh, there's a lot happening. And uh, the last two months have actually taught us to be actual innovators. I, I shared with you some time back a little video of what my students have made. If you remember, initially a face shield, which everybody had, we, we worked remotely on that. So everybody was actually creating that right from wherever they were sitting in from their homes with the 3D printers, etc. So that went very, very well. By the way, we also actually during this uh, entire pandemic, we also, uh, my kids also created uh, what is known as a COVID camera, which I'll share a little more with you later on. But um, uh, basically what uh, the idea of India STEM Alliance, and by the way, uh, hello to Julie and hello to Dacia. I see them on the screen, but I've never met them in person. So hello to both of you as well. And um, once again, Jake, uh, a great uh, to catch up with you virtually again. So coming back, uh, I mean, you know, we started this uh, with the India STEM Alliance with a clear idea that India has, at that point of time, had very little clue as to what's happened, what is STEM exactly. So the first few, few years, we've been spending uh, actually evangelizing and educating people what STEM is. Then we took a leaf from the problem faced by our country and said, let's create, let's put a lot of social, let's have, let's them have a social impact. Let it not just be a business or some fun or a club. So actually we, we, we do a lot of work in the social impact space. And uh, that's what I'm here to talk about today. Every, I, I don't want to talk about profits. We don't want to talk about money all the time, but we really want to see what social impact we have made and we are going to make in the future. So when you're ready, I have a very, very brief presentation. I'm going to wrap up in 15 minutes because I know you guys have got a very, very long day ahead. There have been so many presenters and I know it's, a, it's, a, it's an odd hour for you, I'm sure. It's not an odd hour for me, but an odd hour for you. So um, if you like, I can just, uh, you know, jump Go right ahead. in and then I'll just share my screen then, okay? Yep. Just give me a moment. I'll pull it up and I'll share my screen. Yeah, here we go. And, yeah. Ah, we see your screen. Perfect. 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 Okay. All right. Um, you know, why we call it social in in initiatives is because that's what our real core focus has been over the last 18 months, so to speak. Uh, whatever we do and with whoever we partner with, it's Let's try and make a social impact. Our country needs it. It's a very huge, there's a huge population and we have N number of problems. So we're trying to see if we can get people to understand STEM and then, you know, find solutions for those specific problems. I'm going to address a few here. There are plenty, but I'm going to address a few. Uh, what is important to know that we have aligned ourselves very clearly with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And each of our initiatives, there is a goal which we, if we, we cull out from there and then actually make it happen. So here I go. I've translated it. This in this is what you see, Lak Shiksha Kek Daksha, it is is in Hindi, is in our language, but it means creating a million STEM teachers in the next 10 years. That is our priority. We know that this is a very great social social impact for our for our country if we have teachers, because if you can have STEM, you can have concepts, you can have lots of things. But if you don't have the teachers, you're going to be in trouble. It's just like having a car without having a chauffeur or petrol. So you're going to, you're going to have beautiful Bentley lying right in front of your porch, but you can't drive it because there is no fuel. So what we are doing is creating a different type of a fuel, a fuel which is non-existent in our country. We've got teachers, I have a lot of them, but 99% of them do not know what is STEM. And that is a challenge. So we've actually partnered with a lot of teaching organizations, a lot of international teacher trainers as well, by the way. And uh, our aim is to unite nations, academic institutions, the nonprofits, the foundations, companies, governments, to address the complete STEM teacher shortage. Yes, the government understands now that STEM is the way to go, but we don't have teachers. So first we are building 
We're doing a lot of capacity building and that's something which is uh, picked up very well. The governments are warming up to it and we're doing a couple of pilot projects with some state governments. We are doing a lot of pro projects at the private level also. So getting 100,000 teachers in 10 years is a huge and very challenging task and India Step Alliance actually stepped in and we are now getting a lot of interest from international uh, bodies, NGOs, as well as Indian bodies, NGOs, not-for-profits, teachers, STEM and consultants, experts who really want to make this happen. They're all contributing and that's been a very wonderful uh, experience. We're giving them the support and best part, we are doing this entirely online, completely online, before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and probably even after the pandemic. So this is something we've been actually telling them, see, technology is there, let's use it. Otherwise, India, as a country as large as ours, with 28 different states, it's extremely difficult, and the demography job would be different to reach out to so many people at one time. So again, technology comes in, and now we're doing that. So this is something which is very close to our heart, and it's even very close to the government now, because they have realized that the, the way to go forward is have to have more innovative mindset, more thinkers, rather than they're just rote learners, which is what we've been having over the last few years. Now that that paradigm has changed, and that's where we have really come, and, and we are now market leaders in this space now. I'll, I'll move on to my next one. Hey, please feel free to ask me any questions if you want, or you can wait for it to end. It's just three or four slides, that's it. Yeah. Uh, this is another one which is very close to us. It's called STEM Sakhi. A Sakhi means friend and a STEM friend, especially an initiative specifically for girls. In India, girls are always regarded as those who will take care of the household. They'll take care of the chores in the kitchen, the washing, the laundry, everything, but not really step out into mainstream, uh, mainstream work. Now that's what we're trying to change that now. And we're trying to get a lot of girls get into the STEM profession. Uh, it's a very difficult task because the biggest challenge comes not from the girls themselves, they love to learn, but it comes from parents, it's come from society. They say, why do you want to go out and learn something? Why do you want to move out of the house? Things like that. There is a lot of conservative um, you know, mindsets in India. Not in the main cities, but definitely if you go beyond the main cities, this kicks in. So again, we started a complete program specifically for girls and we call it the STEM Sakhi. And that's why you see this girl with the balloons. We teach them how to soar, we teach them how to fly. And uh, you know, we, we feel that they are damn good, but nobody encourages them. So we are there. So we've started a holistic program which includes coding and virtual reality. So we're teaching them, we're starting off with coding and virtual reality with them. And again, this too ticks off the boxes for the goal, goal four, goal five, goal nine, that is equality in education, gender equality, and innovation mindsets. These are all again sustainable goals. This program has picked up very well and right now we have 3,200 girls uh, who are now part of this movement for us. And again, we get a lot of international help. We get a lot of international participation. We have somebody from the US who runs a complete podcast on their behalf, completely pro bono, but it's a fantastic effort which everybody's trying to make out here. So that's the second of our initiatives and social impact. We want to bring in more girls into the, in, into the technology, science, mainstreams, and that's happening now. Over the last few years, there has been an increase of 11 to 12% of girls actually getting into STEM space, STEM fields at the school level and at the higher education level as well. Uh, that brings me on to my third, and again, um, as I said, there are plenty of initiatives. I've just selected three. This is again very close to the heart. It's called Prithvi Sepyar. That's in Hindi, and the English version is Love Your Planet Initiative. Uh, we've actually working with educators right across the world, in, including, uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard of Discovery Education. So Discovery Education works very closely with us as well in this initiative, and we are working with educators. There is an educator from the United States uh, called Laura Hunt, and she runs the Green, uh, the Green STEM Initiative. We're working very closely with her, Captain Planet and a couple of other global as well as local companies and foundations to bring about and actually create solutions for the earth. And that's something which is very close. Now we create ocean quests, we have pollination quests, we have soil quests, we bring back your sparrows, bring back your butterflies, bring back your, uh, you know, bring back the, the bees. So a lot of kids have started becoming sensitized and they understand why we need to take care of the world. It's a very old adage, we all know that. 
there is no planet B. We have a planet A, but we don't have a planet B. So you got to take care of your own planet. You got to take care of all the things which are dear to you. And if you don't have your planet, you have nothing. So these are the three initiatives that we have really rolled out and have had a lot of interaction. This, especially the, uh, the Prithvi ZPR, is, a very, is going to be soon to talk about the government as well. And we're rolling it out as a pilot with two state governments in India as well. So um, I just wanted to share this, my experience of these three initiatives with you guys. And um, that's it for me as far as the initiatives are concerned. I'd love to hear from you, if anything. Well, Raj, that's incredible. I, I, I can't tell you how impressed uh, I am with what you're creating, what you're doing. And we are going to be, we are obviously recording this and we are going to be putting this up and people are going to be watching this now. Um, you are going to be a template for other countries because very frankly, any problem you have in India, they have other places also. Yes, they yes. And so oh, they're yes. going... They're going to be looking at what you're doing and going, well, oh, we should be doing that with our, with our children. Um, I know you don't want to talk about money, but money does make the wheels go round. So yeah, well, how, well, how are you funding your, this organization? I'll tell you. Yeah, that's a good question. Yes, you require money is actually the real fuel of everything anyways. Uh, what we do, we also, while we have these initiatives, we also have for-profit businesses like we do a lot of curriculum development for schools. We do a lot of workshops there. We set up these innovation labs, what you call your, what you call them in the U.S. as the maker labs. So we call, we can, we said, we call it uh, innovation labs or idea labs in India. So all this generates money. And what we do is, and that's something which we really, which I'd love to share, is 75% of our profits comes back into these initiatives. And that's where, you know, money is important. And we are completely self-funded. We have not taken a single dollar from anywhere outside. We have funded this initiative ourselves through our business. And we now work with more than 3,200 schools across, 3,100 schools right across the country. We work about three to 400 colleges. We work with um, now, since the time I spoke with you last, we are now in 120 different towns and cities in India, 12 different states. And the India STEM Alliance has gone beyond the shares of India. We are now also present in Nigeria, in Kenya, in Botswana, in Rwanda, and a couple of other, uh, in Nepal. So we've, we've been in many more places now. We've expanded rapidly over the last few years. And all that has helped us because the profits from there and the money we make from there by setting up these, by selling uh, basically STEM kits and science kits right across the schools, help fund our, our, our social initiatives. So that's what we do, Jay. So, so if somebody is watching this from a country that does not have it, could they contact you? Would you be interested Absolutely. in talking and helping them set something up? We're doing exactly that in, in, in Africa, in Nigeria, in Kenya. We are working with a lot of local people and we're, we're happy to share our expertise, the models, technology, how we made the models happen. And all of them are very robust models because they've all been more than about one and a half to two years old, and that, which is very, in India, it's big because STEM, per se, came to India about four years back. So these models have been running since last three years and very sustainable models and a lot of, a lot of government as well as uh, foundations uh, you know, are, are helping out us in this. So happy to help anybody who's uh, you know, keen to understand how they can do this and, and much more. This is three. We have many more which we can speak with them. Not a problem and absolutely no cost. Happy to do so. <laughs> Uh, so speaking, speaking of all the things that you're doing, you are doing so many. Uh, can you talk about what you consider your greatest success? And you can define success any way you want. But which, yes. which of the projects you are the most happy about? Yeah, well, actually, frankly speaking, I've, t I've taken top three right here. But if you ask if you want to measure success, I'll tell you how I measure my success. I measure success when I actually go to these schools and see kids who have never seen a computer before actually sit down and explore the world of coding, for example. I see them smiling, I see the enthusiasm, I see the inquisitiveness, the curiosity coming through. And at the end of the session, we take them, and I take a lot of them personally, the smile, the gratitude, it's just too wonderful. I have hundreds and hundreds of people asking me every day to come over and speak to the girls. So <laughs> STEM Saki is my favorite, I would say. One of the reasons I'm a little partial to that is I myself have a daughter, so maybe I'm a little more partial. But, but yeah, and by the way, my daughter is in, is in the USA, in the lockdown. She's in Walt Disney, so she settled out there. So it's a, that's a different thing. But yes, that STEM Saki, I would count as my favorite. The second, I would say, is my Love My Planet initiative. And I see a lot of kids understanding the value of actually 
disposing trash correctly. Very simple. It may be simple for many, but in India, it's not. Segregation of trash, taking out plastics from, from oceans, you know, and, and even understanding that why bees are important for our existence, the existence of this earth. Simple things like that, which normally are not really taught freely in our schools out here. In fact, they've created, we've got at least now about 2,000 clubs like this started up in the last two years. And all this is up, are run by kids. You know, they, they take care of it. And that's my, that's my yardstick for success out here. Finally, and for my teacher program, I have uh, almost, uh, I'll say, I've said 100,000 teachers in 10 years. I think I'll reach that in about five years. And that, I think, is my yardstick for success there wow. as well. Yeah. That, that is fantastic. Yeah, that, we, that is. So we created a complete framework. We've created the content. We've created an online program. So it can run not just in India. It can run anywhere. We are happy to share with anybody who's seriously interested. We can work with them anytime. And so if they wanted to find you, they go to India STEM Alliance on the yes, web? I'm, yeah, there I have my LinkedIn profile. It's linked to my LinkedIn profile there. Or... Uh, you have my email ID. I, you can yes. share it with anybody who feels, I mean, I'm happy to share it. Not a problem. Well, thank you very much, Raj, for sharing this. A conversation with you is always exciting. Um, <sighs> I have to admit, though, that I'm a little bit excited, but I'm also very jealous. So, you are? <laughs> yeah, I'm very jealous. I, 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 I can't imagine how exciting it must be to go into those schools and see stuff. So thank you for sharing what you've done. Thank you. Thank you very much.